How and why do some people hate to see disabled and autistic people flourishing? Disability rights, amongst every other aspect of human rights, are not always kept to by some people in society. Many don't know because nobody's ever told them they've never been introduced to autism or some various neurodivergency, and it hasn't been a significant portion of their education. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to learn out there, so it can be quite hard for even me to remember a lot of the time. There are many people in our world who see a disabled person flourishing and genuinely feel joy for that person. They may see a disabled person on TV for their achievements. They may see a recruit sort of paving their way into an excellent job position with the adequate adjustments, of course. They may see the class naughty kid get the support they need to become an exceptional student. Some people feel great for them, but others, well, they just don't. Some people can even feel a sense of resentment. Welcome to my Autiverse, I'm Thomas Henley and today we're going to be diving into why some people may see disabled people as privileged or undeserving of the success that they have. Let us first talk about this concept of the invisible disability. My channel is of course focused around autism, so that will be the lens in which we approach this concept. And before diving into the meat of the topic, I think we need to talk about the general perception of autistic adults like myself. The issue with autism is that it's often invisible, or at least to some degree unidentifiable to the majority of people, particularly those with ASD 1 or 2. Adults who have learnt to mask their autistic traits through trial and error, reading into and copying human behaviour to try and understand it and also trying to fit in. Some people due to this fact and other facts, of course, believe that people like myself don't have a real diagnosis. For example, in myself, I may seem to them to have pretty good communicational skills. Speaking to a camera, on my own for large periods of time, autistic monologuing my arse away. I may have the communication skills in writing and speaking, but I also have social differences. I've learnt a lot about social differences, but the social element I believe is extremely important to take into account in effective communication, particularly when communicating with holistic individuals, neurotypical individuals. Some autistic things like having a low social battery, sensory issues and perhaps a longer processing time are things that I can personally mitigate with self-care and support, but generally remain constant for me, constant in my life. These things, these general things, aren't things that most people would pick up on though. Most people, even as an unmasked individual like myself, wouldn't think that I was autistic unless they knew some information prior to meeting me. And if they do, they rarely believe that I have meltdowns. They rarely believe that I have any notable significant support needs. To them, I may just appear a little bit quirky. Due to the complexity of autism and the amount of information out there that has remained in the public eye, it is all too easy for people to make the assumption that ASD 1, 2 individuals like myself don't face hardships or just aren't plainly autistic. These judgments are even more prevalent with a veil of anonymity and the existence of well-spoken autistic people on the internet. With the ever-increasing size of the autistic community on platforms like TikTok, YouTube and Instagram, a lot of detractors feel even more empowered than ever to question the experience of being autistic and the legitimacy of someone being autistic. For the content creators, I mean, how can you accurately demonstrate the realities of autism what autism looks like in real life in short form clips. People are obviously going to see those clips and lump us into some kind of Gen Z brigade, some kind of woke brigade that's something that I've heard from other autism YouTubers and content creators. Video and audio doesn't quite capture reality 
and it's to some degree forced and planned. But it doesn't mean that it's false. You know, when you create a video, you have to have an idea of what you want to show. Even though you are planning, even though you are creating the content, it doesn't necessarily mean that those traits, those those things don't exist in real life. People's personalities and communication styles also change to make content more engaging. If you see me out and about, you talk to me. If you see me even in a podcast or in, in an interview, I act very differently as opposed to the videos that I create, the streams that I do. I'm a lot quieter. I'm a lot more of the listener type. That's just generally how I am when I'm not the sole person in a conversation, like monologuing. Ironically, a lot of the aims that people like myself have is to raise awareness and acceptance of autism. But due to the nature of social media, there is always going to be a pretty large group of people who see that content and stigmatize us even further in a multitude of different ways. The more we highlight hardships and differences, the more we are accused of faking, seeking sympathy. If we mask and we talk about positives, we're still seen as faking, but also accused of grifting or coping in some way. The envy of autistic people. So let's return to this aspect of flourishing as a disabled and autistic person and why some people just harbour some distaste for it, some resentment. Now, we as autistic people understand the real day-to-day -day things we struggle with that many people just won't bat an eye at. But a lot of people just don't get it. They see our struggles as a product of bad upbringing or negative personality traits. Some people see autistic people online and make judgments about their lives being completely normal perhaps just a tiny bit different, without hardships, and mostly that comes from how they present themselves in an online space. Even if they accept that we may have some difficulties, they do see them as being minor, something that could easily be fixed, in a sense. They also see how talking about autism, talking about disability, has benefited that particular person, what adjustments and supports they've got, or even what opportunities have been presented to them as an autistic personality in, in, in the online spaces. So naturally, when we achieve something in our own lives, it's not necessarily seen as a hardship or a struggle, rather a product of undeserved privilege. They may say such things as, they don't deserve it. People these days, they need help with everything. Back in my day, we worked on the things that we are bad at. We pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps. Perhaps they were once smiley work peers and um, they start to roll their eyes and talk smack about us for getting a promotion. They may be the cynical granddad or conscientious stockbroker at home watching the news, crossing their arms, shouting because an autism advocate has been given some type of disability award. A lot of people in this world are envious of other people's success. I would argue that it's a pretty normal emotion to feel. If we see someone who's doing better than us, we're generally going to feel some degree of internal envy, in a sense, unless we are like some nomadic sort of spiritual person. I don't know. There could be some people out there. But I suppose it really depends on what we do with it. We do feel it. It may not impact our decisions, it may not impact the way that we behave, the way that we sort of generally perceive things, but it is still there. It's hard not to be envious, naturally. But people's envy tends to skyrocket. When they see people doing well, who they don't deem are worthy of the support that they've got to get to that place, have that support flourish in those circumstances. They feel cheated, especially if they've had their own hardships, which most people do. Now, my bit about envy is likely not news to you, and honestly, I don't see this aspect of humanity ever changing. It's an emotion, we can't control it, we just feel it sometimes. What we might do with a bit of change is people's prejudgments, their education, and also the prevalence of stereotypes that are out there 
in general society. Prejudgments being that autistic people like myself don't have real support needs and don't have a real disability. Education being that autism and support needs aren't always visible and what those support needs truly look like and how hard they can be for us. And lastly, stereotyping. That group think type lumping that we do when we view someone of a particular group like Gen Z, TikTok creators, liberals or conservatives as being sort of inherently one way, inherently priv privileged in, in some regard perhaps. Quite often we forget about individual circumstances and before we are able to analyze that person for who they truly are, what they truly are, we've already clicked away. We've left a mean comment. We've boxed them into a particular agenda because of the way that they present, because of one aspect of their personality, even because of what the topic actually is of the video and what kind of general stance that person has. It doesn't really matter what and why and what their argument is. You know, you send them scrolling on your, on your phone and you see someone talk about something that you don't agree with. You can generally have two reactions. You can just listen to them or you can just scroll away. But what is my point in talking about this? Well, for autism, it's often the social aspects which really hold us back from flourishing in a non-autistic world. Amongst many other things, of course, it can leave us lonely, without friendship or love because of the negative experiences that we've had with people. It can prevent us from passing interviews despite our exceptional credentials. They make a pick up on particular autistic traits as being red flags for not being fit for the role. It can even put us at much higher risk for different types of a use and negative life circumstances. And it's tough. It can be really, really tough living as an autistic person. Life as an autistic person is very difficult in ways that a lot of people can't really comprehend unless a lot of thought and, and time and attention is put into it. And so to remedy that, I mean, the ideal would be that people just have a simple trust in our words, at least just not, not having a gut negative attribution of, of their intentions, you know, thinking that they, they have some ulterior motive, that they have some greater point that isn't necessarily explained by their direct communication. People being envious and making our lives more difficult for succeeding is a very real thing, which generally can have a marked impact, marked negative impact on us at every level in life. In the media, people may harass or comment negatively at autism stars to the point that they exit social media for their own mental health. Just take Chloe Hayden as a good example. In the workplace, the once encouraging team members may start to isolate us, be more disagreeable, remove opportunities from us, or even drive us out of the workplace, making our lives so difficult that it leads to burnouts, to meltdowns and eventual removal from the workplace, either purposefully or through management decisions. That once seemingly delinquent student is now an exceptional student and they draw envy from parents and students. Parents complaining of preferential treatment. Students complaining of favoritism. Segregating that autistic child, autistic person from social events, or even their parents. Making it hard to make friends, impacting their mental health, their self-esteem, potentially their progress in the social and educational worlds. But what am I asking of you? I think the important lesson for anyone who feels this way towards autistic or disabled people is to first educate yourself. Watch a podcast, a YouTube video, even a documentary on the daily struggles and think of these struggles not as a consequence of poor willpower, privilege or an upbringing, but as a genuine inherent struggle that that person has. Try and put yourself in their shoes, but not in a sense of what you would do to fix it if you were in that situation. But as someone who generally just can't do these things despite years and years of genuinely trying. Even think of something that you find difficult to do. 
Remember what that's like. Once you bridge that gap, that gut reaction that you may have, you might start to appreciate what life can be like for us. You may celebrate society, people around an individual, and the individuals themselves for pushing past the very real barriers that face them. Second, reduce stereotyping by second-guessing groupthink. This happens to almost all humans, regardless of which side of an argument or ideology you are. It doesn't matter what your experiences with an enemy group or a problem group are, there's nothing wrong, and I'd argue there's a lot right, with taking the individual approach, being focused on an individual and what they have to say, rather than what you've what group you think they're they're a part of, in a sense. If we're speaking about political stereotyping, you may see a young person with dyed hair and piercings, or a middle-aged man who's bearded and wears a white shirt. Take a minute to compose yourself if you have that gut reaction. Maybe they aren't the person that you think they are. You may be undermining the reality of the situation with thoughts based on superficiality and assumption of negative intent, which I think you can agree is something that we've all done to varying degrees in the past. No matter if it is related to autism or disability, I think it's just generally something which is kind of inbuilt into humans and we've got to do the work ourselves to try and sort of di dissipate those negative gut reactions that we can have. Because there's a lot to learn from people who are different to us, even part of different groups. A lot of the time, if you listen to people like that, at the, at the least you're going to get ideas of what their arguments are for your own benefit. And at the most, you may actually have a genuine difference in, in your opinion, a genuine change, which may be very transformative for you. Lastly, remember that adjustments and supports are not designed to give us the upper hand. They are there to allow us to engage in the world in a similar, more equal way. I understand sometimes benefits that people get for being a part of a particular group may not always be sort of a net neutral. Sometimes it might be even be better for them in, in some related circumstances. But I think in general, if we're talking about like autism related adjustments, I think it's important to remember that it's only viewed as a privilege if you ignore the struggles that someone faces and or undermine their character. In the case of supports and adjustments for autistic people, it's a long and difficult process to get these due to the perception of all round competence that people have, and definitely a very difficult thing to keep confidently or talk about socially with the haze of the, the social consequences, both online and in person. But like and subscribe if you're new here, drop your thoughts down in the comments. As always, I generally talk about sometimes very subjective things, very opinion-based things, so I'd love to know what you think about this very complex thing. If you'd like to support me on my journey or view my members-only live replays, you can do so for as little as £1 a month, and you get a whole host of different cool benefits, and it really helps me as a small, relatively new, sort of self-employed YouTuber. I've recently moved my reaction commentary content over onto a new channel called Inside the Autiverse. So please subscribe to that if you want to hear my commentary on hot button autism content and topics. Love you guys. Stay hydrated. You gotta, you gotta keep on top of that, friend. Your hydration, friend, viewer, person looking at me on their phone. Yeah, I see you hiding there. What are you doing? Stop doing that. It's inappropriate. <laughs> naughty, naughty person. How dare you? I don't know what you're doing right now. I imagine that now that you're aware that I'm calling you out, you're giving me the middle finger. Perhaps you're smiling at me. Perhaps you're you're confused at why I've taken this this random improvisational like tone. It will always be a wonder to both yourself and I, why I do things like this.